So if you play around with religious language, it gives you a way to kind of talk about these ideas. What what do you have with the Catholic Church? Because there are oh, a few references to uh, the Bible and. Yeah, I grew up in a, I went to a Catholic school, a Catholic primary school. My parents aren't Catholic, they're not Christian, but it was a good school and to go to the school you you they took you that you had prayers, you had hymns every morning, prayers before every lesson. You had to go to church three days a week and sing and be part of the services. Um you know, so I had I think my parents felt even though they weren't deeply Christian, it was probably good for me to have you know, it was quite a moral upbringing, you know, it was fairly kind of, so it, this was when we were in Newbury, um, you know, it was quite a kind of a, um, you know, and even in Scotland it was a religious school. Um, I think they just felt, you know, it wouldn't do me any harm to have a, a kind of a Christian upbringing in my early years. Um, and then, but I wasn't ever, you know, because at home I always knew my parents, they never discouraged me from religion, but I knew that we didn't, practice religion the same way other kids did. A lot of the other kids who went to my school, their parents were very religious, they practiced religion devoutly, and I was aware that there was a difference, that my parents didn't, had elected not to be, you know, Christian. So it was kind of this thing where I always knew it was an option. I never saw it as something I had to do. And I wasn't, I was, you know, my parents never contradicted anything that I learned at school, so they kind of left me to resolve my own opinions, and I think by the time I was 15 or 16, I had a kind of my own personal religion where I kind of had taken some things from what I'd been taught at school and stuff, but I also, there were various things I found didn't make as much sense to me, so I just decided I would disregard those. I always had this kind of syncretistic approach, um, and that carried on, and, and I sang in a, ch I was paid to sing in a church choir when I was kind of 17, 18. I did some church music qualifications, but I was not deeply religious at that time. I was Christian, nominally Christian. I felt like I was a Christian, but I didn't feel like I was orthodox. I always had my own opinions, and I didn't. nobody was telling me that I had to subscribe to everything. It was quite a relaxed atmosphere, and everybody said, you know, whatever you believe is fine. You don't have but to it, be. I think it shines through in your music. Yeah, well, by the time I was 18, I wasn't even calling myself a Christian anymore, but I like religious language. I lot. mean, also, uh, apart from the words, also in the, in the choir. In the sentiments yeah, and sentiment, the kind of yeah. the musical. Yeah, I definitely think, well, certainly from a musical perspective, all of my musical upbringing, before I got into hardcore bands, when I was kind of 17 or whatever, I was always, hymns were the first kind of songs I ever sung, and structurally, I like traditional hymns and melodically I like hymns and I like harmonies and and lyrically as well you know I'd always listen to Leonard Cohen when I was a child and he always sings about biblical in biblical language even if it or a lot even though I think he's a Buddhist you know but he again recognizes to use religious language sets a certain tone it gives us kind of solemnity to the music it allows you to address kind of big issues and you can really if you start to speak in biblical language, you can kind of say, well, now I'm going to be talking about big human obstacles or big human issues. I'm going to talk about life and the same thing everybody goes through, relationships and family and moral codes and obligations and all these kind of ideas that come hand in hand with religious language. So if you play around with religious language, it gives you a way to kind of talk about these ideas. Nobody is going to sing in the language of the King James Bible when they're singing about parties or, you know, whatever. It's, it gives you this kind of way of instantly setting the tone of a song and that was just kind of interesting to me. And the language on its own is poetic and it's beautiful and, you know, I like that. So, But it's not, none of the songs are profoundly religious in sentiment. They're not yeah. Christian songs, it's not a Christian record. But um, it just, I like to talk about, you know, religious stuff. It's interesting to me creatively. Okay. Kind of.